Hey everyone, it's John Isaias here from The Automator. Today we got a really cool script. We've updated it. This, uh, If you're working with a lot of stuff with text, often you want to peek inside a variable and see what's there, whether you're debugging or whether you're just seeing results from an API call or something. And what gets problematic is when you work with other people, the code you use, they don't necessarily have. They're using a different editor. Like Isaias uses VS Code. I use Site for Auto Hotkey. Or I, I used to be sent from well, SK Studio. Studio. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, and each of those have different debug windows that you can use to dump text into. But then what if you're not using that? Like Notepad++ apparently doesn't have something like this. So right. this function makes you not care what editor the person's using. So I can give code to Zayas and he can give code to me. We don't have to change anything. It just runs and dumps yeah, the, the text. Output the output is going to be the same. It doesn't matter. It, it, yeah, it, regardless of what editor you're using. And this, so to back step a bit, whenever you're working and you're testing code or just writing something new, a lot of times you want to see what is in one of the variables. And most commonly, you use a message box. The problem with the message box is that stops your code from continuing, right? Sometimes I want to run a loop. Let, let, let's say you have a loop thousand, the loop is going to go thousand times. You don't want a message box stopping your code for each of them. Like that's not the like line breaks and depending on how much text is there, it's hard to read. Like yeah, there's a lot of other. Be, so, yeah. so sometimes you want the output debug command, which is just dumping the text into an output window. And then later on, you can scroll through and see what the loop did, for example. But to your point, if I have, if I'm using HK Studio, the output debug window is not the same. It's not going to act the same way, and it might just ignore the output debug command. So this just decides what editor you're using, and then for each of them, it would use different code to show that message. If you don't have any of those, or if the window that we're working with doesn't have anything, then it creates its own window and shows it. So let me just show what it looks like. Now, this is the V1 code. And this is the V2 code. You see that the difference is not that no. <laughs> not that far off. It's almost the same. Now, the difference comes in here. You see this GUI here? Right. When you go ahead and take a look at the V2 code, look how short it is. It's a little bit shorter because now we are using objects and I could do a lot of things That's in a right. one single line. This is the resizing command in one line, I can just resize the window. In the other, I had to actually create a label with a return and then do the thing. So it is a little bit different in that in that sense, but everything else looks very similar. So the other thing I would say is, and this is a thing for me, especially if you're doing any sort of a GUI, V2 is the way to go. And it's because they're objects. And even though I'm not even an advanced programmer, you can read objects so much easier. Now we have a course on objects. If you're new to objects, it's a great course right. to work through. Ironically, the course is done in V1, but again, objects are objects. Like they don't change that much in V2. Um, it's yeah. just that in V1, GUIs aren't objects. So you have this command syntax, which to me is much harder to read and stay clear. In V2, it's just, wow, it's so much easier to read. Remember that we do have a course on GUIs for V2. So sure, it actually yeah. has a, if you I'm want to learn used to objects, the right, object. right. <laughs> but if you are wanting to learn how to create a GUI in V2, we do have a specialized course just for that, in which I show you everything that is going on in here. Now let's go ahead and test the script. So these are just the function definitions, but for me to use the function, I just have to use the first one, the output window. So let's just uncomment that line. And let's just put a return here. So how you would do it on your end is that you would have a file called output window.hk and you will include that in your script. But in your script, you just have to use the function like this, output window and what you want to show in that window. So if I do this and I have the code in VS code, when I do this and run the code, you will notice that here at the bottom, I got a message saying this is a nice test, right? Cool, that's awesome. Now let's copy that code and paste it straight into site. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to site, paste it, save it. And when I run it, you will see that I just got the text here instead. It's exactly the same code, right? I haven't changed anything. I just used output window. This is just a nice test and it just put it there. 
But what happens if I do it in an editor that does not have an output window like this one? So this one here is a quick editor that I use very often. It doesn't have an output window. What would the code do? Again, I'm just copy pasting here. If I run it, it would just create its own GUI and show you the debug message right there, which is a nice thing. <laughs> you know, like it is very interesting that you can just go ahead and um, do these kind of things. And it doesn't matter. It's exactly the same code. And it is very useful when you're sharing code with other people, because in that case, they don't have to touch your code. And if you have something that is outputting debug messages, they will be able to see it later on. So we talk about this a lot in the hero group of like thinking about the context. How can I programmatically deal with the different environment instead of me manually doing it? The computers are, you know, much better at that kind of stuff. Let's just program around it to let it handle it for us. Yes. This is a very basic way of branching. And this is kind of like what decides for you. And it is a very simple decision. Um, in other situations, the decisions might be a little bit more complex. But basically, that's it. If, you're, if you want your script to be smart, kind of, you will have a lot of if and else statements in which for each particular situation, it decides what to do. This is the part of the code that decides what it's going to do. Yeah, I'll put a URL here. You can go grab that script if you like. Uh, if you enjoyed this and learned something, like the video. It really helps us out and get more views. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thank We're the largest auto hotkey channel out there, by the way. We do videos twice a week. And so um, you don't want to miss out on the stuff we're releasing. Cheers.